What is that? A booklet. A booklet about female circumcision. We will protect our daughters. Information for parents and women affected by female circumcision. Hmm. Hmm. All I know or all I remember about it is my grandma used to talk about it. Saying a woman who's not circumcised is not worth to become a wife. Hmm. Is it an issue in our young generation? Are they informed about it? And by law, is it illegal? Does it have health risks? I wonder what would the doctor say? What, what has religion to say about it? Whether it's Christianity or Islam. Female circumcisions are forbidden in Switzerland. They constitute a violation of human rights. They are an infringement upon the right to physical integrity and to health. It concerns an inhumane and degrading treatment that is afflicted upon young women and young girls. This is a practice that we cannot and that we do not want to tolerate in Switzerland. We need to take all measures that are available to us to protect the young girls and the young women concerned against this traumatic infringement, not only on their bodies, but also on their souls. For me, as a woman, and also as a Swiss citizen, this is of highest importance. I am very happy that last year, the Parliament decided to introduce a norm in the Swiss Criminal Code specifically prohibiting female circumcision, and such circumcisions can be prosecuted in Switzerland, even if they were carried out in another country. But it is clear that this is not sufficient. If we want to stop female genital mutilation in our country and in the entire world, one must absolutely be well informed about this topic, talk about it, and together convince people that female genital mutilation is a crime against women and girls and that this practice needs to be stopped. Good morning. What can I do for you? I feel pains. I don't know maybe it's something you must have done to me when I was very young. Okay. And I understand this problem has been going on for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned also it depends on something they have done to you when you were a child. Yes. And this is called female circumcision. I don't know if you've read about that. But what is done in childhood usually is that the external parts here are cut away and then the opening, this is the vaginal opening and this is where the urine comes out, okay. the bladder opening. This part then is very often sutured together. So what we'll do, I will look at this area and see what kind of circumcision was done to you. And once we've done that, we can discuss what can be done about the situation generally. One of the dangers of circumcision is that the clitoris is removed and that's the central organ for sexual function. Another danger is, you can see this is the opening for the bladder for the urine to come out. And if this is closed here, it's very dangerous because then the little girl cannot empty her bladder and she can also die from that. Sometimes you, you can see that the opening for the bowel is very close to that area. So this can be damaged as well and this can cause septicemia or severe infection. And this can also destroy the organs that underlie the anus here, meaning leaving behind a girl that is totally stool incontinent. And very often problems in this area here of the vaginal opening do exist because of scar tissue. Scar tissue is not as good as the natural tissue and um, it 
can contract quite a lot, making it even narrower and almost impossible to have intercourse. Again, if this is cut away, this can also cause infections of the whole area and sometimes girls die from that. And that's why I consider circumcision as a procedure that must never be done to any girl. And another thing is also when you get pregnant, some women first of all already have difficulties getting pregnant because of the circumcision. And also when the baby is born then, this whole area is not how it's meant to be. Meaning there is scar tissue and the baby sometimes cannot be born so easily. So it's very good that you come here now for information. And it's also very important when you get pregnant that you see a doctor and discuss things properly, if necessary also with a translator. That can be a good friend or you can also ask in the hospital to get a translator. I think it's very essential that you really understand what we recommend and why we do that. And also if we discuss the mode of delivery when, when you're pregnant, um, that you understand what we suggest in this field. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a great pleasure for me as Imam in the Islamic Center in Bern to give just a simple notion or idea or explain something about a connection between the Islam and the circumstance. Because the word FGM, when you look at it, it's nothing to do with Islam. And I'm quite sure that many things which are nothing to do with Islam is invented from traditional way and the people say it's a religion. But when you say FGM, it's a violation. None of the Imams, none of perfect people, none of surgery doctors can intervene because they know that this is something really out of humanity. My name is Pastor Charles, Christ Covenant Ministry in BUBN. I am here to bring to your understanding that circumcision is only appointed to male and not for female. And that's why in a biblical aspect, there's no anywhere from Genesis to Revelation that is written that Female should go through this act. Women are not allowed to be circumcised because it is against the word of God and it's against his rules and commandments. Did you know that Amina isn't coming to school anymore? She decided to give up everything, huh? Amina isn't coming to school anymore? Why isn't she coming to school anymore? She decided to give up everything. There's a rumor going around that she was circumcised, and so, so since then she doesn't feel anything anymore, and she lost her self-esteem and everything. She's decided to give up everything. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's impossible. Do you know that I'm not? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Me? I'm not circumcised. That's not possible. I'm not. My parents decided not to circumcise me because for them, circumcising a woman is... it's pointless. For them, being a circumcised woman means you don't live the life of a woman, you don't have fulfillment, and you have all the difficulties that a woman could have. Back home, in my religion, it's like that. A woman must, a good woman has to do the household, has to have children, and must be circumcised in order to find a good husband. There's no need to be circumcised to find a good husband, to be a good woman. Look at me. I don't have 10,000 partners. Just because I'm not circumcised doesn't mean that I have to have 10,000 men. It's out of the picture, it's out of the question. The fact that you're not circumcised, doesn't that make you want to be with other men? Uh, 
No. If I love my husband, I have to be faithful to him. I will be faithful to him. Because in my tradition, we say that a woman who is not circumcised will want to cheat on her husband. Uh, I don't agree. She isn't really a good woman. She can't find a good husband. Uh, I don't agree. Everything depends on the education which your parents have given you and the environment you grew up in. So, for me, Everything is based on education. You don't need to be circumcised in order to be faithful. No. Moreover, one has to change things. One has to change the way we think. And one needs to sensitize people for the world to change. We can't continue to mutilate women and submit them to moral and physical torture. We just can't. It needs to be talked about on television in order to change things positively for women and their well-being. Me, personally, I wish my future wife is not circumcised. And if, one day, I have a daughter, I will not let her be circumcised.